Howdy again, it's Mr. Pete, your interweb shop teacher, and this is short subject number 34 entitled Countersinks Explained. So I have here on the bench most of the countersinks that I could round up around my shop. Many of them are duplicates, and you certainly don't need this many. You really only need one or two. But with me, the more the better. And what are the purposes of countersinks? Well, there's three or four reasons why you might use them. Mainly to countersink a hole so that flathead bolts and screws will be flush or below the surface of the work. But I use countersinks more often just for deburring. I like to use them for chamfering and sometimes I countersink a hole before I tap it. It helps the tap get started. Countersinks are most often made of high-speed steel, but you can get them made out of carbide, cobalt, and the older styles were simply carbon steel, such as this Stanley countersink that is meant to be used in a brace. These will not work on metal. They're strictly for wood and are to be used for wood screws, and I can still visualize my dad countersinking with a brace. Matter of fact, that is his brace. If you look in the MSC catalog, you'll find there are six or eight pages on countersinks, and you, you buy them by brand or material, that is high-speed steel, cobalt, or whatever, and diameter. So this is a one inch, and you can specify the shank size as well, and usually the number of degrees will be here, such as 82 degrees, one inch, high-speed steel, and the manufacturer's name. My favorites are Severinsen and Ford. Nothing to do with Ford Motor Company. This is a uniflute. That means it has only one flute. The idea here is that they do not tend to chatter very much, although I dispute that. These can be resharpened. Matter of fact, this one is dull and it can be done on a surface grinder with the special jig that Ford used to sell. I do not know if they still do. I don't believe it's practical. I pitch them when they're dull. This one's about done. Besides the uniflute, you can buy three flute, four flute, and six flute. Six flutes are supposed to last longer because they're, the work is divided up between more cutting edges and you can feed faster with them, and they're supposed to be chatter-free. Again, I dispute that. Although 82 degrees is the most common, you'll also find these available as 60 degrees. This is a 60 degrees. Also, 100 degrees and 90 degrees, and probably a lot of other specialized ones as well. As well. Now, a, a 60 degrees like this can be used to clean up center holes, not in a hardened piece like this, but if you've got a damaged center hole in a generator or something, you could use the 60 degree to clean that up. I neglected to show you an 8 flute. Notice the reduced shank here on this particular one, but this is a popular type of countersink as well, and it simply has a hole drilled through and you can see where someone's butchered this up and put more relief right here. But I have read in catalogs where you can sharpen these with a little Dremel tool. I've never done it, and I would think it would be difficult to do. But I rather like this type, and I do have several of these, as you can see. And here's a whole set of them. Most can't get that out of there. Most uh, countersinks have just one end on them, but sometimes you're going to see double-ended ones like this. There. That's also the type with a hole in it, and it's a double-ended, and quite small in diameter. And I got three or four of these. I think they're brand new, but I don't really know. Almost too small for me to see. As I was digging out the countersinks to show you, I found these in my toolbox. I forgot that I had them, but this type of countersink with a single hole in it, it's kind of like a uniflute. It's only cutting on one portion of it here, but these have pilots on them to hold them into the hole uh, and center them perfectly. <coughs> Excuse me. There are some types of uh, 
countersinks that tend to kick off to the side. I think the Uniflute centers itself best. I never cared for this type of Noga deburring tool for holes. I kind of like it on a straight edge, but not so much in a hole. And at the high school, I, I really couldn't keep these around because they would instantly roll off the bench and break. So for countersinking with a school class, this was what I used, a brace. With it, and it was dedicated. That's all we used it for. And I had switched this Nightmare 2 jaw chuck to a Jacobs chuck. And th that was around, I don't know what happened to it. It's probably in the landfill now. But a very handy way to, sh to deburr heavily burred steel that uh, is hot rolled or uh, produces a nasty burr. So that's really a good idea. That was my brother's idea. And you can push against it and really get some force on the work. I also favor this type. These are homemade where I just put a countersink into a handle and that is so nice for deburring. I use these constantly. They lay on my bench. This one is a rather recent acquisition that came in a, a box of miscellaneous but it's pretty handy as well. This may be a Noga, I'm not sure, or it may be a no brand. This is a Severinsen. Of course, this is soft aluminum. And the pin here is to keep it from rolling off my unlevel bench. Oh, that didn't work too well. Well, you get the idea. Okay, let's countersink with a Uniflute. Now this is a three flute and I'm running the machine at about 700 RPM. <clears throat> no chatter on that one. This is a six flute. That worked nice. Remember that you may want to clamp your work for some sizes and some materials so that it doesn't start rattling around on you. In the chuck I have one of these and this is called a Zero Flute Pilotless. I just looked that up. I didn't know what to call it. And the last one that I'll use here is a zero flute with the pilot. And of course that has to match the size of the hole. Boy, that really... That did a nice job, didn't it? Well, that concludes my little tutorial on countersinks. I hope you got something out of it. Refer to the big MSC catalog for their six or eight pages and descriptions of all of these and their purposes, their advantages, and their disadvantages. This is Mr. Pete saying so long for now, and I'll see you next time, I hope.